your live chairman thank you good evening members and colleagues welcome to this planning meeting of Malden district council today thursday the 7th of april 2022 this meeting is being streamed live and recorded and by being present in the meeting you are giving consent to being recorded welcome also to our youtube viewers at home as we are streaming this meeting live as well as recording my name is councillor mark hurd and i'm chairman of Malden district council members if you wish to speak on any item please indicate and i will invite you to speak at the appropriate time you may remain seated Please reference a page or paragraph number when referring to the agenda papers and keep your contributions clear and concise. Please note the sound recording of this meeting is dependent on the correct use of microphones. Therefore, when invited to speak, turn on your microphone and turn it off when finished. Please avoid the top table area as the uh, cameras here are live and the feeds are hazardous and affect our streaming. I would also like to advise that the fire exit is the door behind this top table. There are no alarms expected. We'll move on to agenda item two. Apologies for absence. Uh, good evening, Miss Bird. Good evening, Chairman. Good evening, Members. Thank you. Apologies for receiving from Councillor Bussinger, Councillor Miss Beale, Councillor Bell, Councillor Edwards, Councillor Mays, Councillor Nunn, Councillor Siddle, Councillor Skeens, Councillor Stamp and Councillor Stevens. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. I know that uh, several members are unwell and uh, we, wish them, uh, we wish them well. Uh, agenda item three uh, are minutes of the previous meeting. It's recommended that the minutes of the meeting of the District Planning Committee held on the 3rd of March 22, found on pages 7 to 12, are approved as a true and accurate record and these are presented for accuracy only. I so move. Do I have a seconder? Agreed. Councillor Fluker, thank you very much. Can we agree those by assent members? Agreed. Thank you very much. Agenda item four, declarations of interest. Members are reminded that they are required to declare any disclosable pecuniary interests, other pecuniary or non-pecuniary interests, which they know they might have in items of business on the agenda, having regard to paragraphs six to eight inclusive of the Code of Conduct for members. They are reminded that they will need to repeat their declarations at the appropriate point and leave the room if required under the Code of Conduct. Unforeseen interests must be declared similarly at the appropriate time. Do I have any declarations? Councillor Durham. Thank you, Chairman. I have a non-pecuniary interest as a member of Essex County Council who are statutory consultees and have been consultees on quite a number of uh, items pertaining to this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Fleming. Thank you, Chairman. A non-pecuniary as a member of Essex County Council who are statutory consultees. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other members? Thank you very much. Those are noted. Uh, we now move to uh, agenda item five. The reference is uh, 2100752 RES. This is land at Broad Street Green Road, Maypole Road and Langford Road, Haybridge. This reserved matters application is submitted to this committee as it is a strategic site within the strategic submitted local development plan. It is for the approval of access appearance, landscaping, layout and scale for the construction of 160 residential units with associated access parking, servicing and landscaping. The officer presenting this report uh, will be doing so remotely, um, uh, which is um, Anna Tashtoglu. Good evening, Anna. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Tara. Thank you. Thank you very much. Could you present your report, please? Yes. Let me just share my screen. Um, are you all able to see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Great. So the application relates to the largest of the three sites allocated for development in the North Haywards Garden suburb, referred to in policy S2 as the S2D North of Haywards site, which was granted planning consent for a hybrid mixed use development on appeal on the 25th of October 2019 under the terms of application at 50 slash 00419 slash OUT. 
the current proposal relates to phase one of the approved development, and in particular, the land that is reserved for the delivery of, the, of residential parcels one and two, as you can see on the plan. Uh, both parcels are located to the east of Maple Road, which is here, uh, and they form the westernmost part of the approved development of the North Hayward's Garden suburb. Uh, it should be noted that the development does not include the land that is necessary to approve the strategic landscaping and infrastructure elements, um, such as roads and sats. Uh, these elements of phase one were previously uh, approved at the District Planning Committee on uh, 30th of September 2021 under the terms of application 21 slash 00384 slash RES, and they include the access from Langford Road, um, uh, road improvements on, on Main Road, and all the landscaping surrounding the two parcels. Um, phasing plan uh, was also approved. Uh, a revised phasing plan was recently approved, and the map here shows the agreed phase one in uh, blue. So whatever you see in blue is uh, phase one of the development. These reserved matters, as already stated, uh, application relates to uh, the construction of 160 residential units with associated access, parking, servicing and landscaping as shown on the layout plan here. Uh, these are two plans showing uh, the compliance of the development with the parameter plans. Uh, here is the density parameters plan. There are two different uh, densities um, uh, within these uh, uh, residential parcels, and the proposed development complies um, with this plan. Also, the building heights, um, three different types of building heights allowed within this um, section of the this, the, this section of the um, application with three storeys, maximum three storeys, only allowed along uh, the spine road and a small area here um, adjacent to uh, Maple Road. Uh, we have only two uh, three-storey buildings here where my character is. The majority of the site is two-storey with three uh, bungalows uh, at the centre of uh, Parcel 1. Uh, the development also includes 30% affordable. Here on this plan you can see uh, the position of the affordable units, rented and set ownership. Uh, building heights, as I have already um, explained. Materials layout. Uh, the development includes a number of fixing materials, including brick and weatherboarding and um, red and slate and terracotta roof. Um, roof tiles. Uh, this is the immediate layout. The uh, development following amendments complies with the uh, standards within the uh, modern district design SPD in terms of immediate space. Uh, this is the landscape strategy layout which shows the type of trees and shrubs and hedgerows that the applicant poses uh, within the site. And the management responsibilities layout, uh, the public open space um, will be managed by a company, the uh, communal open space is to be agreed. Uh, some technical drawings, uh, highway central arrangements on the southern parcel, uh, on the northern parcel of policies and the southern parcel. And the refuse layout. These are some street scene elevations um, of the site. Um, for example, the top one shows the uh, views of the uh, northern parcel. The, uh, the, these are the um, easternmost uh, street scene. Um, here, the second one is the northern part of uh, along the spine road of the southern parcel. Uh, I'm moving on. Uh, here we have some streets and elevations from within the parcels mainly. Uh, more streets and elevations, like, oops, apologies. Uh, the top one is the uh, western part of the northern parcel. 
the middle one is the Western um, streets and elevation of the southern parcel. Uh, the development includes quite a number of different types of dwellings and I have included some uh, some of them for you to get an understanding of how the development would look like. Um, so here we have some two bedroom market units. Uh, these are two bedroom affordable units. Uh, three bedroom market units. This is a three bed affordable. Then again, three bedroom market units. Um, this is a two story building with two two bedroom flats, and they're both affordable. Here is a four bedroom market unit and another one. Uh, and this is the five bedroom market unit proposed within the site. Uh, here is the north, the, the block of flats we see is located on the northern parcel, northeast uh, part of the parcel of the northern parcel and, and the plants. And here are the the only three story um, units proposed within the uh, home site. Uh, and two and a half so these are flats and maisonettes and these are the market units and uh, similar overall appearance and design apart from um, materials uh, here are the garages and car barns uh, and a bit sort of post for you might want to see I have also included some of the visuals that the applicant has submitted. These are not to be uh, to form part of the approved plans, but they just give a feeling of how the development would look like. Another one. And another one. And here are some photographs of the site. Uh, the top one is viewed from Maple Road towards the different part of the site. South is from within the site towards Maple Road. And this is the view from within the site towards the north and the existing truck access. Uh, on the top, you see the view towards the south and the uh, some long views of the S2E site, which is also part of the North Haven's Garden suburb. Uh, south is the deep that forms the eastern part, eastern boundary of the site, and um, also some views from uh, Holloway Road, which is further to the south of the site. Um, so the principle of development of this site has already been accepted, uh, as it forms part of the North Haven's Garden suburb. Uh, the details of the residential element of uh, phase one of the development are considered to accord with the North Haven's Garden uh, Strategic Master Plan Framework, the North Haven's Strategic Design Codes, the approved parameter plans and the outline plan permission to which it relates. Overall, it is considered that the layout, mass, height, form, design and appearance of the development would be acceptable and it would be a good representation of the village as character that is aimed for this section of the North Haven's Garden suburb. It is also considered that part that, that the proposal would provide a level of affordable housing that is policy compliant and would encourage the provision of mixed communities. The housing mix proposed would be of balance acceptable without prejudicing, prejudicing the deliverability of the future phases of the approved development. The proposal would provide a good level of um, quality of life for existing and the future occupiers and parking provision that accords with the vehicle parking standards SPD. Uh, no objection is raised in terms of the impact of development on the highway safety or the highway network. The impact on existing vegetation is acceptable and the proposal will also deliver net biodiversity. On the basis of all the above, uh, this, this reserve matters application is considered acceptable and officers recommend approval of the application subject to conditions on pages 53 to 59 uh, of the agenda. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Anna. We have uh, one public participant for this planning application in line with the 
public participation scheme, I will now invite the agent, Mr. Matthew Wood, from Phase 2 Planning, to read out um, his submission. May I remind you, Mr. Wood, that you are allocated two minutes only for public speaking in accordance with the scheme. Tara, do we have the... Oh, we do have the time recording ready. OK. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Two minutes from when you start speaking. Good evening to members. As you will recall, the wider application site relates to the largest of the three sites allocated for development in the North Haybridge Garden suburb, with this reserved matters application seeking detailed consent for the first phase of the residential element. During the course of this RM application, which it itself has followed detailed pre-application discussions, the applicant has worked positively with officers and members to evolve the scheme to its current position. As such, officers have now concluded that the proposals as presented would be fully acceptable as a good representation of the village edge character that is aimed for in this part of the suburb. The proposed housing mix closely aligns with the associated requirements of the outline planning permission, both in respect of private and affordable housing. It is important to, to add that free private bungalows will be provided as part of this early phase of the development, with a significant proportion of the bungalows on future phases being of an affordable tenure, including a greater proportion in closer proximity to the neighbourhood centre. The proposed scheme has evolved to ensure that a good standard of amenity is achieved for all future occupiers of the development, including full policy compliance in respect of private amenity provision. Officers' committee report confirms the acceptability of these detailed proposals in all planning related respects as part of its strong recommendation for approval. Therefore, these detailed proposals represent a sustainable and policy compliant form of development and members are urged to support this recommendation and grant detailed planning permission accordingly. Finally, it, it is worth adding that in March 2022, the Countryside retained their five-star House Builder Award and a Gold Award from in-house for customer satisfaction and is delighted to be returning to the Molden District for their, their first phase of development in over 20 years. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Perfect timing, Mr Wood. Thank you. Members, I'll now open the debate and invite you to put any questions or make any comments that you have on the report. Councillor White. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, now, I, I, um, I know we are where we are. Um, under 3.1.6, um, I take it the SUDs were approved at the last application, which covers this area as well. I mean, it says it in the report, but I just want to double check. Um, and I, I do take a little bit of a, a, an umbrage with the, um, mem uh, the member of the public saying that uh, they, they worked with members. Well, if they've worked with members, they could have put in the bridleways. But anyway, moving on. Um, so, that, so that was just my opinion. I know everybody doesn't like the bridleways, but I'm sorry, it's in our policies and the applicants could have been uh, more helpful. Um, now, the other problem I've got is, um, can officers confirm to me that the residential care neighbourhood uses, including shops and sports, will be ring-fenced and will happen? Um, because with rising fuel and living costs, these are more important than ever, and we have a duty to improve the lives of the people who live there. Now, it's all very well for people to say, oh, yes, we'll do this. But in how many applications in Haybridge have these things not happened? And well, I didn't want the application to be approved. It was approved at appeal, so we are where we are. But can officers assure me that this is going to happen? Because every time we get a few houses built, this phase, that phase, the other phase. But I want to be sure that the that the nicer things do actually happen. So I don't know if there's any way we can condition, condition it or anything else. But thank you. Thank you. Um, Anna, can you answer those questions, please? Yes, Chairman. Uh, these... Uh, the, the delivery of all these elements that Councillor White referred to um, is secured through the Section 106. So, they, I mean, I don't have the exact number um, on top of my head of, of the dwelling that they would have to be delivered, but it's all secured through the Section 106. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Darrow. Oh, thank you, Chairman. Um, Chairman. Firstly, I'll just make an observation that we've got less than 50% of our members here tonight, which I think is a rather sad indictment. I know some members may feel that this doesn't concern them, but of course this concerns the entire district because of the fact we don't have a five-year land supply. This 
application is absolutely critical to us having any chance of regaining that. And until we get a five-year land supply, every single parish and district in the, every area in the district is liable to be um, developed where we don't want it. So, you know, this is not just uh, a Haybridge matter. Um, it's notable that there aren't actually any local members here. I'm sure some have got good reasons, maybe the COVID card or maybe... Well, whatever, we'll, we'll leave it at that, shall we? Um, as I've said, Chairman, you know, we are where we are. This was given uh, approval on, uh, on appeal. We've granted the other reserve matters. This one does at least accord to uh, the garden suburb design principles that we were shown many, many years ago, which cannot be said for other developments. Um, Elsewhere in uh, elsewhere in the Malden area, we won't go into that. So, Chairman, I I, I think that you know really, uh, I I did mention at the last meeting when we had another reserve matters um, application that you know the sooner these are brought forward and granted, we can start uh, getting these properties built. We can then start getting our five-year land supply, and we can start to get the community benefits that come with it uh, as has just been highlighted and i think that um the other point i would make about the um the lack of attendance tonight uh should it come to it i'm sure that is a point that would be noted by a planning inspector but we'll leave it at that thank you okay thank you councillor darren councillor thompson thank you chairman um i don't know if Ms. Tassel could put the pictures up of the Two and a half and three story flats and maisonettes because I'm, I'm i'm really fairly happy with the designs overall but these particular units just look disproportionate to me they are they're fairly ugly i have to be honest uh they're the ones thank you um now i'm pretty sure in my own mind although i you know i'd be happy to have that confirmed through mr lee that this wouldn't justify a refusal I'm sure it wouldn't, but if there was any way the applicants could tweak that and come back without causing delay or aggro or anything else, I'd certainly be pleased to see it. Anyway, thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr Lee. Through you, Chairman. Um, I don't think anyone's going to argue that these are particularly high end, excellent design. Um, Properties, um, but as Councillor Dunn said, we are in a situation with um, five-year land supply. We are in a situation where we have design codes that have accepted these higher properties. Um, it, it's a very difficult question to answer because obviously the officers have recommended approval. The LPA thinks it is acceptable. Um, as always, all I can say is that it's the tilted balance now. The weight is in favour of uh, the developer and. Obviously, as always, it comes down to the decision maker. But if you do think that these the harm caused for the scale of the overall development by these properties is significant, and that benefits outweighs the harm, then that would form a reason refusal. But that is within members' gift. Obviously, it's not up to officers. But because but we've come to our professional recommendation is that the scheme is acceptable. Thank you, Chair. Did you want to come back on that? Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm certainly not arguing about the actual heights. Um, you know, as we've said, that they were agreed long ago. It's, it's just the particular look of these particular buildings. And, and no, I'm not by any stretch of the imagination suggest we refuse a whole scheme just because I don't like these buildings. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously we're inviting comments and uh, uh, hopefully the developers might bear that in mind. Uh, Councillor Boyce. Chairman, thank you. I'm rather intrigued by Condition 9. Um, uh, and it, it talks of the vehicle parking standards of 2018, and it's about charging points for electric cars. Um, am, am I to understand that these are going to be attached to the actual houses, or some houses, or are they going to be a free-for-all um, location for these charging points. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Fluke. 
Um, I'm sure if it helps Mr. Lee for the benefit of the tape, uh, it, I'm sure it's going to direct members to page 48 of the parking standards SPD because that actually covers this off. And, and, and can I say, I'm, I'm delighted that unlike other developers, Countryside seem to have picked up on page 48 and actually executed it throughout this document. So well done to them. Uh, but I have got questions as well. But I'll. I'll Okay, um, actually I was going to go to uh, Ms Tashoglu. Uh, are you able to help with that, uh, Anna, at all? Yeah, through you, Chairman. Um, according to the uh, Vehicle Parking Standards SPD, one uh, electric charging point should be provided uh, attention to with, within each dwelling at least one. And when you have uh, flats, also there is at least there is a need to be at least one charging point um, into any uh, flooded development. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Fluke, are you okay with that? Um, yes, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, uh, but I'm, I just wonder if there's going to be a queue or how much punch ups there might be to want to uh, connect up. Okay, Councillor Fluke. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I, um, look, my understanding of the, of the parking standard documents is, is that all, all individual houses have one. Yeah. And then there's a percentage of others, and then there's an announce for parking spaces. I mean, what concerns me enormously is, is that we've had this discussion before with applications, and this hasn't been mentioned. It's only because I wanted to do that bit of research this afternoon that I, I actually found this. But as I said, Countryside picked up on it. Um, Chairman, could, could I just draw your attention to page 59 first? Um, and in particular, formative number seven once I get there. So did I say 49? I meant 59. Um, 59, yeah, you did say 59. Yeah, so 59, Chairman, I think there's a typo there. Uh, I'm not sure it's that relevant, but I think when I actually get to page 59, apologies, my iPad's not scrolling properly. I'm sure by now you would have found it anyway. So uh, the informative, I, th I think, Chairman, the last word should say stage and not state. I mean, I think we, anybody involved in the construction industry will know that the building regulations are in the state. Um, but I actually think, um, Chairman, that should say stage. And I, I think that's, bear in mind, it's fire and rescue. I think that's important to get that right, Chairman. And then if we could go back to page 32, which, which was my main point. And this is something which I'm going to, we're going to need, I believe, some advice from uh, Ms. Tasterglue. Um, and this, Chairman, is to do with the um, provision of bungalows under the uh, affordable housing. Um, Pat, the last sentence of 5.216, um, just for the benefit of members, it says the applicant has confirmed that this will be fully achievable and deliverable throughout the remaining phases of the development. So this means the actual bungalows. Now, Chairman, I'm not sure how we're going to police that because we've seen the way these developments sometimes get carved up. I, su I suspect economically um, the developer would be keener, Chairman, I think, to, to have affordable houses than bungalows. So um, my question to the officer is, Chairman, is, is how can we condition that to make sure this actually happens because we do have a shortage of bungalows and you know there's a certain degree of swerving in this and I, I don't think it's sufficient to, to to not approve this application but I think we do need to make sure that these bungalows are um, are, are delivered on this site chairman and, and that we don't lose the opportunity and I think so long as Miss Tatsugu can come up with a condition um, to make sure that that happens, Chairman, I would propose that subject to that condition, we actually approve this recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, did you want to come back on that, please, Anna? Yes, yes, please, through you, Chairman. Um, so the final point about the affordable units and the bungalows in particular, as part of the, um, of the approved scheme, an affordable housing delivery plan was approved, submitted and approved. This allows this flexibility to provide that there is a certain number of 43, if I recall correct, um, bungalows, <clears throat> one or two bedroom bungalows, so they need to be provided throughout the scheme. Uh, there is no requirement to be provided in its phase necessarily, but they need to be provided um, w within the scheme. Uh, we 
wouldn't I don't think that we would need to um, we would need to condition that necessarily because this is this has been considered as I said through the affordable housing uh, the affordable delivery uh, plan um, and also the the applicant has submitted what what we can do is like in future phases if we see that future phases come in that the whole development is, is five phases that future phases come in and no bundles, no affordable bundles are provided, then this is when we need to start raising concerns. Because this is uh, phase one, this is around the 10% of the whole development that's going to be delivered within the site. So and the uh, total amount of affordable use, the affordable bundles um, that they should have been provided in this phase is six. So we feel we're quite comfortable that they can be provided in future phases. The applicant has also submitted um, an indicative plan that shows uh, how these bundles will be provided. And I can share my screen um, and show you this plan of service with members. Again, this is not a plan that we would be able to condition, but it shows how the developer considers um, providing these bundles. Do you want to share my screen? Yeah. Yes, yes, please, if you would. I, I think Councillor Fluker's question was, how can we police it? Yeah. How, do, how, how will we know? I mean, the more I hear about this, you know, the more alarm bells ring because we're relying on the affordable housing delivery plan. I'm not sure that that's actually mentioned within the narrative of the informants or the conditions. So, I, you know, I just want to tie this up. Look, don't get me wrong, this is good development and I hear what people say about design, but of course, those buildings, if you look in the design guide, Chairman, there's ones in there that are different. So um, I think this is a really important point. All right. I think, uh, I, think, I think Mr Lee can help us here. Oh, right, okay. Dear Chairman, as Ms Tashoglu explained, these have already been re re restricted and required through the previous outline permission. So these reserved matters that draw down over that outline permission are still tied by those restrictions. So overall, the scheme must provide this quantum of development, and but there is not a requirement for it to be proportionate throughout the phases. So we are very confident, because it's the first phase that and it's only a relatively small percentage of the housing, that the requirement of this number will be delivered over the rest of it. It will not prejudice the development coming forward, etc. So there is no requirement, there's no actual ability to impose a, a conditional request over future phases through this permission, because this is a standalone reserve matters. But irrespective of that, there are the requirements of the outline that says that the housing must be provided within these parameters. So they will have to come forward for the whole suite of uh, reserve matters to be granted permission otherwise they would have to come forward with variations of conditions or such like to be able to play to move that around and without that they have to deliver what they have to deliver so um, there is no way of tying in future applications for this because it's already been tied in through the outline thank you chairman thank you, chairman I'm, I'm grateful for that of course we've got that narrative recorded so uh, let's hope it all delivers chairman i did make a proposal and i think someone I'll seconded second it. it sorry could you remind us of your proposal Chairman, it was to approve the, the officer's recommendation. Oh, I see. I, I think, yes, I understand that. I think Councillor Fleming wanted to say something before I... Indeed, you can. <laughs> Councillor Fleming. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I just wanted to ask the officers about long-term stewardship of the landscaped areas. I think you've referred to it in Condition 7. <laughs> I just wanted to know the lifespan of that, whether it's ad infinitum. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Tashoglu, can you help us with that? Sorry. Please, Chairman, can you uh, repeat the question? Ms. Tashoglu just mentioned me, so she didn't hear it. I, I want, and I wanted to find out the lifetime of the landscape management plan, the stewardship, whether it was ad infinitum yes thank you chairman uh, that, that would be uh, five years as usual um, any any landscaping scheme would would have to be um, um, secured for for the first five years um, from, from from the planning 
Three, okay. Chairman, I'm not sure Sorry. quite, Mr. Chairman, struggled quite understood the girl, heard the question. Um, obviously, the condition relates to five years, which is in relation to landscaping, which is what is the standard condition. Anything longer than that is deemed to be unreasonable in planning. That's quite regular. But the overall management of soft landscaping has been dealt with through the Section 106 at the outline stage. Um, I don't have that information um, in front of me. I'm not sure if Mr. Tash Dogg does, but to certain extent, it's not actually relevant to the termination of this application because that will be dealt with. That was already agreed through the management of the through the Section 106 at one uh, outline stage. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Fleming. Thank you. So that that's in the 106, Matt. Yeah, it's it's the long term stewardship of the landscaped areas. Thank you, Chairman. It's a standard part of the 106 for outline is that landscaping how that will be managed is dealt with through the lands the section 106 outline stage I said i don't have the details in front of us okay. because obviously this is reserved matters for phase one but that is standard practice in planning thank you process. can i ask another question Chairman? thank you i wanted to ask about informative four about the drainage into uh surrounding uh landowners do you have a page number please uh yeah 58. so 58 58 thank you I think we're all flicking over at the same time. Yeah. Informative four, yeah. What's your question? <laughs> so uh, just was that in relation to a particular concern with this development? Uh, I'm thinking of surface water drainage in particular. Thank you. Ms. Tashoglu. Yeah, through you, Chairman. Uh, this was a, an informative suggested by the League Local Flood Authority. That's why it was imposed. It wasn't necessarily a concern because they did not raise an objection to the proposal. Okay, thank you. Councillor Swain. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I've got uh, a number of um, questions, um, a few pairs actually. Um, the first one, uh, um, there's a lot of detail in here about the individual um, details of the housing um, and I'm sure um, the officer will tell me if this falls outside these particular reserve matters or not. Um, they concern details of the, of the uh, housing um, about accessibility to the first and second floor two bed properties um, for uh, disabled people um, and there's a statement about light being adequate um, <laughs> for all habitable rooms. I wonder how that is actually assessed, who assesses that. Um, and looking at the um, footprint of these buildings and the verticality of them, um, do, do the planning officers um, appraise the actual size and usability of the rooms within the, the plans? Um, two other points, one about the canopies and of the porches and so on which, as I read it, will be flat roof, um, probably fairly standard, unappealing ones. And I think it does make a big difference to the appeal of the area if they have decent sloping canopies uh, on their porches, as opposed to the, um, well, the bog standard two poles and a flat bit of flat roof. I think it makes a big difference to the street scene. Um, and lastly, on the weatherboarding, is that plastic or would and what is the sort of lifetime of um of this uh, material on the building that's the first one of the pair oh that's the first question is right oh, the first pair <laughs> okay <laughs> i've got four there i think right uh mr Tashoglu, can you help okay. us with those please accessibility yeah. for disabled yeah did you get all of those um i i believe yeah okay um the first the first one about accessibility of the first floor units we the the requirement for them to be accessible and adaptable was um, used to be accessible and adaptable was introduced after the approval of the uh, initial outline application. So it's quite hard for us to impose such condition at, at this stage. In relation to um, to uh, adequate lights, uh, the way the assessment is that I, as an officer, uh, look at all plans submitted um, as part of this application and checking that all habitable rooms have a window, basically, um, to every, every single house type. Um, 
with um, <coughs> with regard to uh, sizes, I can confirm that the applicant has um, the applicant has confirmed that all affordable housing units will be uh, in accordance with the NDSS standards, the national standards. But um, as an authority, we have not adopted them. Um, so yet, yeah, it's not necessarily a requirement. And um, for those matters, it, 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 will, it will also be a planning uh, judgment um, whether the size is uh, an acceptable size and um, whether um, light and um, it's, it's sufficient and all of that. Uh, I think the last one was about where the um, uh, I think canopies or porches, but I think that's a, that's a cosmetic issue, I think, on that weatherboarding, yes. Yeah, um, about the weatherboarding, uh, the, the applicant stated that the, oh, bear with me, um, materials, that it's going to be, yeah, no, it has not been specified whether that would be timber. But if councillors are worried about the fencing materials, we can impose a condition for um, either product details or the actual material to be submitted and approved by the local planning authority. Are members minded to uh, impose that as a condition? Yes. Yes. You are. Okay. Um, are, are we suggesting wooden cladding? No. 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 Yes, sir, boys. Chairman, um, I, I would have thought that there was a normal condition that uh, all materials uh, uh, that, uh, uh, agreed by um, the local planning authority. Mr. Ling. Thank you, Chairman. As condition four states at the moment, it says the external finishing materials for the development hereby permitted shall be carried out in accordance with the details of and the materials as shown on plan ML01 Rev B prior to occupation of any of the dwellings. If members Feel that there needs to be an assessment of specific materials i would suggest that that condition is replaced with uh, one requiring details to be submitted and oh. as councillor boyce says we do have a relatively standard condition it wouldn't be onus for us to reword that the question is whether or not it's necessary and that's within the gift of members thank you Chair. okay um councillor swine you've got another question um, well the, the the other point which i really hope the um the applicant might take on board is this question of the appearance of the porches and the and the front canopies um, to uh, buildings and the, the impact it has on the attractiveness of the street scene. The second one is, was, um, and it follows on to some extent from, um, to some extent from what Councillor Fluker said. Um, when I went through this, so, there were uh, numerous um, parts where it said the um, plan fell short on a number of things, but in each case it said this is not sufficient reason to refuse the application and i wondered how many times one hears that before one thinks well perhaps one should refuse it um a number of these seem to have been dealt with now um uh so i i, I don't make a great point of that at this stage but although i do think the amount of visitor parking is is under um it's going to be a problem um and the question of relating to the one that Councillor Fluker raised as well, is uh, shortfalls on things like bungalows and so on, and uh, what confidence we can have that they will be compensated for if there is no actual overall plan at this stage. Uh, otherwise, we do run into the problem, um, or the situation where we'll find at the final stage, uh, we get the, the pleading that can't be done or it's not viable. Um, so, I mean, it's certainly something we need to look out for. May I move on to the other points, Chairman? I'm sorry, I thought you had, yes. <laughs> yes, OK. <laughs> no, no. Um, the first thing is, this application originated in 2015. And an awful lot has happened since then, particularly regarding energy conservation and climate change and so on. Right. And uh, numerous statements <laughs> from government about um, the need to be prepared for uh, reducing carbon emissions and so on. Um, and I, I would suggest, or I assume, that all those statements are, in fact, material considerations um, and therefore need to be taken into account. 
mention was made of electric charging points, but there are all sorts of other things um, which um, I would hope the applicant has thought about, such as solar panels and heat pumps and, and this sort of thing, as well as the, the charging points. Um, my last point concerns informative number five. I'm not quite sure I understand what that is about. On page 58. It seems to imply that um, that the um, the viability of the um, the flood or the, the water uh, disposal system is um, uh, beyond the scope of the the, plan, the flood authority, and that it's the responsibility of the district council. Um, if I'm right in that. Are we saying that District Council has the capability of monitoring the, the um, flooding issues from this development? Are you able to answer that, Mr. Lee? Uh, uh, Ms. Tashoglu, can you help? Um, yeah, in relation to the, to the final point about, I think it was about five credits, right? Yeah, um, all, all I said in the report is that this, this has been secured by a condition imposed to the original permission. So the details of the file drainage will have to be submitted and approved by the local planning authority. Yeah. Okay. I think that informative five is from SUDS and it's just a standard one is that they've requested. Um, to be honest, I'm not actually sure it really ties in appropriately with this application as reserve matters with no such details included but obviously we've included it as their recommendation thank you chairman okay um i see your hand councillor lagan but i'll go to councillor white just briefly please, oh, yeah, thank you so one, one quick one um just following on from councillor fleming's point um do we know if the downstream landowners have given their consent and what happens if they don't give their consent just out sort of curiosity Chairman, formative four is highlighting that it's a civil matter and or common law in this case, but um, it isn't a material consideration for the termination of uh, this application. Yeah. And I know what members are going to say, but we only in planning can look at what we're gifted to uh, take into account and common law, civil matters, uh, covenants, etc., are all not matters for the planning determination of an application. So um, I'm not really about to say much more on that, whatever questions you've Posed to me and Ms. Tash Togler about that. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Councillor, I'll go to Councillor Lagan next. No, I'll go to Councillor. Okay. Um, Councillor Fleming. Fleming Councillor Fleming. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Lagan. Um, I raised this because I actually took my lovely dog for a walk along, I think it's called Grapnel, Grapnel's Farm Chase. Um, so it goes up to that it's outside of the development site and it had been raining that day and there was an awful lot of surface water pouring down that track. Uh, in fact, part of it is sort of piped above ground, um, which is why I, I'm concerned about it. I think when we had the reserved matters in relation to the uh, relief road and the drainage, we put an informative on all to that the developer could covenant that the driveways must be permeable um, because you know anyone that's familiar with the site knows that it is surface water drainage is a real issue there so I don't know whether Miss Lee feels that that might be relevant here if we could put that informative on again thank you so you chairman um, be a little bit to the point no um, I think I think this application is reserved matters. Um, we've dealt with the matters of unsustainable drainage under the outline. You know, DAT should have been posed there. As I said, I'm, I'm not really sure actually how relevant, taking into account what this application is for, how appropriate these um, informatives are for this application. Obviously, as it's a major, we have to consult the SUDS. They're a statutory consulting all major applications that it reserved matters full outline, um, no matter what it's for. Um, and they've recommended that, so why, that's why we've imposed them. But taking into account what actually what this application is for and what we've already granted and the other conditions we've imposed and restrictions, I don't think that would be appropriate in this instance. Thank you, Chair. Right. Councillor Lagan. Thank you, Chair. Um, just got a couple of 
points and a question. The, the first point, I'll, I'll say, and this is recorded, I'll leave a tenner, that place is going to flood. Uh, it always has done and it always will, it will flood. And we are where we are. Um, just so I know, on the proposal page at the, the top, are these points guaranteed, like the primary school and the, the road, they will come on at some point? So they are guaranteed, that's it. Habish is going to get what it's what it surely needs, yeah? Can I have a, a verbal so it's recorded, please? Dear Chairman, on the assumption that all of the phases come through and all of the development is ever delivered, there are requirements at various stages. Some of it is outside our gift in relation to actual delivery, but in the planning system, yes, as much as we can guarantee. That is a yes. Yeah, thank you, Chair. And there is a risk it might not. Um, the planning system used to require contributions at 100% delivery. It doesn't do that anymore because it learned that people only built 99 out of 100 houses. There's always a certain level of risk, but I think the way it's now cascaded, it means it's very unlikely that it wouldn't happen. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. That's, uh, as the, the gentleman spoke, as an award-winning person, I'm sure they'll keep their morals and their, their commitments to deliver what they say and what Habish desperately needs. Um, the... I, uh, this is always my bugbear. It, it's the graphics that come through, um, because we're talking about appearance. Um, can some would the developer one day please put a graphic when all the cars are parked and the bins are out, and the cars are parked and it's difficult to get around? Because at the moment there's only three people that live here, and there's only one bloke who's got a bike. You know, so it, it, I I can't trust this. I, I'm you know I, I'm not I don't mean to be disrespectful, but to me, it's how can I go, actually, that if, if that's what was created, I, I think that's a fantastic thing, and the planners know how to plan, and the developers know how to develop. But from a local boy's perspective, how do I ensure that people are going to be living in what I see here? And the other thing is, and it's a question about trees, in, in these, these lovely um, little visuals, they've got some pretty full-size trees. Are, are, are they actually going to be put in at full size or are we going to have smaller trees that take 30 years to grow before we'll actually get a street scene that actually looks like that? Because we need that desperately for the environment because we're taking away so much of this green land um, to, to build housing. And I know we can't do anything about this development. Now, I'm not a fan of these estates. You, you know that. Um, that yeah, that's, that's fair, but I have to determine it on what's in front of me. So I just need to know that what this thing actually looks like is going to be that. They're going to get the infrastructure that they need and it is going to be a nice place for people to live. And it'll flood. Okay, I think I, think I, have, I have an observation on that, that, that we, can't, we can't limit the number of cars that a resident has if they choose to have a caravan or a speedboat, et cetera, in, in the drives. But I hear what you're saying. But, of course, we're here to determine the planning of the buildings, not, not the street furniture, if you like, that, uh, that goes with that. Just, just one come back to you just for a tiny bit, but it, because it's in the pack, I think it's it's fair and relevant that one should take that into consideration. And I'm I'm very much um, yeah. We, we hear this the five year land supply and we have to build. Well, I think there's a challenge coming on how that's calculated because uh, there's new information coming forward. But the the last point is also about there's a discussion about members and officers. And again, I think that was very valid that what members because. We, we, the members are, you know, the, the bridleways issues, etc., and the things that are very passionate to people who are elected people that represent local interests, rather than the planners can just say, well, we we did, we don't going to put them in, you know, things yeah. like that would have ticked the box and we would have been somewhere further down the road. So there are more observations and concerns from from me, um, Chair, and I get what you say. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Swain, yes, I'll lay you one yes, more. Yes, it's just one one point. Councillor Fleming has reminded me of something. Was was going to point out, and that is this reference to permeable parking. It seems to me that's, that comes back to my point about um, uh, dealing with the changing environment as being material consideration. And I think it's extremely disappointing that um, the whole areas are not permeable. I, th I think it's essential these days. There are too many driveways being carpeted over with block, block paving or tarmac. Okay, right. Okay, so members, uh, we have uh, the recommendation here is to approve subject to the conditions as detailed in section eight of the report. We do have a proposal to. Uh... Yes, Councillor Fluker. Chairman, I, I think we, I think members are minded to add 
this the, to change condition number four on page 55 where I think Mr Lee suggested that the, the change should be um, with regards to the details and the materials being submitted um, so I would propose that chairman as a, as a, as a, a change to condition an amendment to condition four and subject to that chairman continue with my proposal that we agree to recommendation thank you and councillor helm you're happy to second yeah. that proposal right are you okay with that yeah okay um so members uh, can we agree that by assent Agreed. yes councillor Lagan. okay uh that is uh, your dissent is noted thank you that right. <laughs> okay uh, agenda item six is any other items uh, well to say that is that is carried anyway um so in agenda item six is any other items of business that the chairman of the committee decides are urgent i have none uh, therefore members and officers i thank you for your contributions this evening my thanks also to those watching the live stream and i draw the meeting to close at 2025. <laughs>